So in that, our topic for today will be quantum coherence. We'll be talking about what it is, how it works and how it helps when it comes to meditation. And we'll be looking into uh, time space as the next step, uh, which we may do in the next session. So quantum coherence, we have talked about brain, how the brain functions. We have talked about if we have to change our habit, that we have to be above our body, our environment, and time. That means Don't we... Like, sir. Hey, Akesh. Uh, Akash, uh, welcome. We just started. So, Don't thank, like, you. Know. <laughs> thank you. So, when we talk about overcoming those things, you know, that we can change, then we talked about how we can come out of the stress and we can be more creative. So, that means out of survival mode and get into the creation mode. Once we can do, we can implement change in our life. We can be in the creation mode. The next level is getting into the zone where we can understand more clearly. So quantum model, if we really understand what it is and how really the energy, when we say energy body and the movement of energy. So if we go to the lowest level, when we say a cell or an atom, there is this energy, which means you have sub nuclear particles. You can say electron, protons, you have the nucleus, but the electrons could exist in this zone anywhere. It's like electrons are rotating around the nucleus. That's a simple understanding. Question is at any given time where it should exist. Now, when researchers were observing, they observed that whenever you observe, the electron comes in the physical form, otherwise it goes back to energy form. If we really see from the perspective of the sheer size, if we consider the nucleus as the size of an SUV, that means the electron could be Anywhere, say in the state of Arizona in the US, so you can imagine that how much emptiness is there between the nucleus and the electron. The electron could be anywhere in the whole state if the nucleus is the size of SUV. And that is why we say the 99.999% is emptiness within the atom. So, you know, we feel everything is solid, the body, or if you are, uh, you know, look at any metals, you think steel uh, or any metal is uh, no gap, nothing is really solid, but inside it's 99.99% is emptiness. And that's where the energy is. So as soon as the observer is taking the attention away, it is converting into energy, looking at it becomes electron. Now, physical matter can't exist or manifest unless the observer is giving it the attention. So the matter is constantly oscillating between the energy and the matter. And it's roughly 7.8 times per second. Now this 7.8 is also important when it comes to in terms of Hertz, the frequency when we talk about frequency of Hertz. So this is where the observer effect was born and we'll talk about it a little more. So quantum field is like invisible field of energy and not only energy, it has the information as well that exists beyond this time and space. We get stuck with our ego, with you know me, my body, my belonging and all those things but when you get above all this so nobody no time no thing when you are above all that attachments we can experience this unified field 
So reality is both energy and matter. And that's why, you know, sometimes when we are talking about energy body, the layers, physical body is the last, but out of the remaining six, total seven, um, the level, which is energy body, that's where these things uh, fit in. And that is how through meditation we can achieve anything because this is how we are interacting with our energy. So through this invisible field, the field that is connected everyone, organizing everything physical. So the 3D world we live in, that gives us the sense of separation. However, the quantum world, there is no separation. It's all about connection. And that is where the oneness comes. And we can feel it, sense it with our awareness. And again, that is why when we talk about meditation or breath work, breathing, that's where it comes in because that allows us to get in touch with the, the energy, the field, whichever way we want to call it. So when researchers found this observer effect that when you're observing, it becomes electron, otherwise it gets into energy. And this is where switching between the mode, but talk about electromagnetic form of the energy that is where all the possibility exists. Now the question is how to tune to these possibilities that exist in the quantum field. Any wish that you may have, it is feasible, it is possible. The question is, again, are we aware, are we able to connect to the field or not? You know, it's like if you're driving and you tune into your favorite radio station, you're listening to music or talk, whatever, uh, depending on the station. But there are other stations as well. You have just tuned into one particular one. That's why you are listening to that music or talk. However, the possibilities exist. Multiple stations at the same time, but just that you have tuned to one particular one. Similarly, out there in the universe, you have multiple possibilities. It's just how we can tune, how we can increase the energy of our body that we can get to that level. So there was another experiment done on this observer effect that uh, they had this electron gun and just two slots. And they were expecting that when we will hit the electron through this slot, we will see two band because if the electron goes through the left, we will see a band of uh, on the screen, the left side or the right side. But they were surprised when they were fighting through these slots. It was not just two bands, but they were multiples. So it is not just the physical thing that it goes. Imagine you have a tennis ball and you are throwing through the slot, then you will get physical. That means left or right, two bands. But when it comes to electron, they saw those multiple bands which, uh, you know, go into this theory of quantum world where it is the energy and physical world they are switching. Now, why we are talking about you know, this or the coherence? Because energy is flowing in the body. Whether you call chi in terms of Chinese or ka, what they say in uh, Egyptian, or what we say prana, it, all the same thing with the meridians through which the energy flows or nadis and through which the energy flows, these are all invisible paths in our body. So coherence means the energy is flowing in an order. Incoherence means there is disorder. All zigzag, anything can go in any direction. So when this energy is flowing very cohesively together in harmony, it reflects health. And whenever this flow is all zigzag, it's not going at all in coherence, that reflects disease that we develop in our body. So if we can improve coherence in our body, especially we are talking about the brain where we can uh, distinguish 19 different sections of the brain biologically, 
or we talk about heart and brain coherence, which is very important in the functioning of the body, that how coherent it is. And for that, we do brain and heart coherence uh, meditation. What it does is it brings harmony. It brings these sectors, whether within the brain, brain body, or other systems in our body, in coherence. And then we, from diseases, we can come out, we can come into health, or if you have no health issues, you can maintain your health. Now, how, in terms of energy, this waveform is happening. So when you have energies in coherent, that means going in all direction, no synchronization. So imagine there is a wave A and wave B, and they are in moving opposite direction, means the phase. So plus one, minus one will result in zero. So the resultant C will be zero. Whereas if you do meditation or breathing techniques, you are creating coherence in your body. Same example, if you have wave A and B, both amplitude one, so one plus one, the resultant C will be plus two, not zero, because now they are in phase. So one plus one, not one minus one. And this is how we develop health. So when we are reacting to different situations, whether people, environment, doesn't matter. When we are negative, means we are irritated, we are angry. What we are doing is we are inviting the stress hormones, whether it's adrenaline, cortisol, all that is going in our body. We spend most time in what we call the flight or fight system means either you're fighting or you want to run away with the perceived danger or perceived stress which is induced your energy around the body shrink because you are using that energy just for stress you know running or fighting with that whatever danger you have perceived and when we are shrinking that energy that's like a reserve energy and very simple, when that shrinks, your health shrinks. Or when we can expand, health expand. So in order to tune in in the field, in order to have this connection, we should have clear intention. You can have affirmation. And if you recall, we talked about affirmation visualization as a combination. We use elevated emotions because these are positive, very powerful emotions that really brings health rather than negativity and anger. So we try to come out of, you know, all the negative low level emotions like shame, guilt, pain, you know, all those things, which in our day to day life we do in why? Because it's life. So when we have core and brain, when we have core and heart, then this energy channelizes and becomes unified. So what happens? More and more coherent energy that your brain is, the more coherent, more efficient, your heart and brain, they work together. And then you can really tune in into these possibilities because these are all out there in the universe. Because when we try to change Matter with matter, it's not efficient. It's not quick. Uh, take it this way, like if we talk of a mechanical system, like the blood flowing in the body, taking the food and other nutrients or enzymes or hormones from one part or the other. It happens every moment, but it is slow. When you talk about signal from the brain through nerves going somewhere it's like electrical signal it travels extremely fast so means faster than the mechanical system like blood but when you talk about electromagnetic waves which takes the message to each and every cell of the body because not every cell is connected with the nerves so that is even faster means fastest between the three so this is where you know matter trying to change matter which is not that it is bad but it is the slowest process but when we get into energy changing your physical thing it becomes much faster process 
Now, heart is our center of divinity, you know. Uh, doesn't matter which um, faith you believe in or belief system, heart is always given um, a key, uh, you know, position in all this you know, energy system or our health or our uh, thought process in any way, form we see, because it is really uh, connected with the whole functioning and our uh, development. It's a key thing. When we come up from survival to creation, and if we look from the energy center point of view, the first three energy centers out of seven, they are energy center of consumption. Your growth starts from fourth. When the energy moves from third to fourth and then continue moving to fifth, sixth, seventh. So the fourth, the first, where really it starts uh, getting into your health or your development is heart. That is the heart energy center. Then it gets to your thyroid, pineal gland, and then of course, uh, pituitary gland. But so that the gateway from third to uh, fourth, that means from survival to creation is heart. And when we do with the meditation, pranayam, or when you, you know, bring your energy in coherence, electrically or electromagnetically, when you can uh, measure, you can measure these waves, it goes up to three meters wide. So what happens is when you're in uh, real good control of what's happening inside in terms of energy, you may be emitting these waves as much as three meters in each direction. So sometimes you meet a person and you say, wow, you know, the vibes, uh, I can feel the vibes or, you know, uh, I had a very good feel vibes or all those, or sometimes you go to somebody's house and you say, wow, good vibes. What is that? That is exactly these energy which we are all having our own. And when these energies do not synchronize, um, we don't have that good feeling, but when they do, we say, wow, I, I have a good vibe. So this is how it works. It depends on your thinking, your feeling, your influencing, and this is interaction with all the people around us. So there is always a vibration match with whatever you want, whatever your affirmation is, your wish is. Only thing is your energy and that energy should interact. And that is why uh, when we do affirmation, we bring that energy constantly out in the universe. And when we can synchronize, when we can expand our waves, it will go out in the universe and find a frequency which exactly matches with this. And now it is collapsing this time space thing and it is drawing the event to you. And that's how this combination, when we say, you know, use a formation along with your meditation because you are expanding that, you are going and getting it. So you don't work too hard. The event comes to you. Because you are sending out your thoughts, your signals. And the feeling is drawing the event back to you. And that's why this elevated emotion is critical to be attached with your affirmation. Because it amplifies the energy. So there was an experiment done uh, with the DNA uh, if you have heard about Institute of uh, Heart Math, uh, it's a great institute in Australia. They have a lot of research and other things going. So they were trying to see if they can influence, if they can wind and wind the DNA or not. So different ways they tried, they could not change. You know, just by chanting or just by uh, wishful thinking, uh, certain things uh, did take place. And uh, no, I need to go. Okay, Akash, thanks. Anytime. But uh, they could not influence. But when they opened up the heart and they tried, there was no change observed even then. But when they opened up the heart and brought gratitude, this is where the elevated emotion comes. When with that combination, they observed 20% DNA they were able to unwound at a remote location. It's not even that they are sitting in front of it. And that is where, you know, time, space, space, time, that concept comes. But the power of your energy, your synchronization, your affirmation, I mean, 
this, these are the things that proves which theoretically we feel, how, how is it possible? But it does. So there are different experiments which does prove these concept. And once we understand how it works, whether we call it scientifically, biologically, then it's easy because if you understand what it is, then how to do become easier. And this is the attempt to make certain things, certain concepts uh, clear to you. So I'll stop sharing now and uh, stop recording.